morning, beloved in Christ. Welcome to this hour of worship and fellowship on this Good Friday. On this particular day in the history of the church, the words of John the Baptist help to direct our attention to Christ Jesus when he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Beloved, I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who suffered and was humiliated, but remained obedient to death, even the death on the cross. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Romans chapter 31 to verse 39, and I'll read from the Revised Standard Version. But let us pray first. Dear Lord, we ask that as we are about to read your word, you will open our eyes that we may see, our ears that we may listen and hear your voice. We pray, Lord, that through the Holy Spirit, you will make our hearts receptive for your word, that in the end, we will not only hear, but also be moved into action, into followers of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the word that became flesh and lived amongst us. Amen. Romans 8, verse 31 to 39. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God? In Christ shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our theme for this morning is God is for us. Nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Today, even more than other times in our life, I want to say with Paul, what then shall we say to these things? It is the morning after the announcement by President Cyril Ramaphosa that the national lockdown will be extended for two more weeks until the end of April 2020. The past, few, the past two weeks was just a trial run, some already said last night. The real Lockdown starts today, today on Good Friday. 
is it still then a Good Friday? What shall we say in response to all this? Paul answers this question for us when he says, If God is for us, who can be against us? And with these words, Paul starts with a victory song expressed with passionate energy to end the portion that he started with in chapter 5 verse 1. Bringing it to a climactic conclusion. As one commentator describes it, in an unstrained volley of rhetorical questions, dramatic repetitions and contrasting universals, Paul is born by a thermal current of assurance that God is with us. Moving the first readers of this letter joyously to praise God for his faithfulness. The certainty of that faithfulness is celebrated in brisk repetition. Like a 16 gun salute with 16 references to God and Christ in only nine verses. The language is almost hyperbolic, expressed in, in angelical universals. We read, there is no condemnation in Christ. No power against them, us as Christians. No one to bring charges against them. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. For all is given to them. All things work for them. And in all things they are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. God is for us. Here we have a summary of the gospel in four words. The most concise definition of grace in the Bible, as someone said. Of course, these words can be misunderstood. And it, it has been a lot of times throughout the history of the church. Even today, as Christians try to respond to this global pandemic, it definitely does not mean that God protects us like li little porcelain ornaments in a beautiful display cabinet. Paul, for one, would not mislead his be his, the believers like that. Because Paul, the greatest of all missionaries and church planters, has experienced enough trials and tribulations, hardship and challenges, and was a living testimony of tests and triumphs. God is for us, means I know what I'm talking about, says Paul. It is not an easy road. Christians are not exempted from sickness and loss, suffering and even death. God is for us. This is an historical statement testifying to God's action on our behalf. Paul says, God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us. Listen to that again. God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us. And that is why it is called Good Friday. It is this love of God behind the suffering that makes this Friday good. Herein lies the deepest grounding of our, of our assurance in faith. God gave up His own Son for us, delivered Him up for us. And it was on the cross that Jesus experienced the full impact and consequence of being given up, being delivered up by His Father. It was here on the cross that Jesus experienced, in a sense, hell. There he descended into hell. There he experienced the deepest sense of God-forsakenness and absolute loneliness. 
a condition of extreme horror. Being given over by his father did not start that moment on the cross. It started a little earlier when his own disciple betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver, reducing his value to that of a dead slave killed by an ox, according to Exodus 21 verse 32. He was handed over when the high priests rejected him, when Pontius Pilate delivered him to the shouting crowds who screamed, Crucify him! Crucify him! He was handed over, given over, when the soldiers mocked and flocked him. When Peter denied him and his friends deserted him. Yes, he was given up by his father. And from this place and space of hell, he cried out, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Matthew 27 verse 46 God is for us means that Christ died for us. God gave him up for all of us. Christ become the sin offering. He bore the sin of many. Reads Isaiah 53 verse 12. Paul continues, if God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? The logic is irrefutable. If God paid the highest price, why would he quibble? Why would he quibble about anything else? The cross is the assurance that God is for us in all things necessary for salvation now and in the world to come. The one who died redeemed humankind from sin and judgment. Because of our justification by God, there is no condemnation. Hallelujah. But Christ was also raised to life and he is at the right hand of God and listen to this he is interceding for us we are guaranteed victory over death and assurance of eternal life early in the chapter Paul assured us that the Holy Spirit was interceding for for the saints now he doubles this assurance Christ is also interceding for us indeed we are represented we are covered we are protected and therefore we shall overcome it's as if Paul is saying to all the forces bring it on bring it on and he asks the question who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall trouble or hardship or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sort? I've already mentioned that we as Christians are not exempted from trouble and hardships. The things Paul mentions here reminds us of Job's adversaries, but also speak to Paul's own experiences as recorded in 2 Corinthians 11. Verse 23 to 29. According to tradition, Paul would eventually die by the sword in this city of Rome. But come what may, Paul proclaims the blessed assurance to the congregation in Rome, to all believers throughout the ages, for all believers across the globe even today. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God in Christ. Our victory takes place through suffering, not apart from it. We are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. We have strength not only equal and sufficient, but far more sufficient 
for overcoming the preceding catalogue of evils. And not even shall the catalogue of evils which follows injure us, because Christ, because God, is greater than all. And so he continues in verses 38 to 39, For I am convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels, nor, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This reminds us of the words of the Good Shepherd in John chapter 10, verse 28. To 30. I give them, my sheep, eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. The victory comes not by escaping suffering, nor even in the face of suffering. But in God's love, in the midst of suffering, it is not our hold on Christ which sees us through, but His hold on us. The victory in God's love will not let us, let us go, won't give us up in life or in death. He holds my hand, reminds our brother and gospel singer, Alvin Peterson, with his well-known song. He is my keeper from day to day. The road may be long, but my Savior is strong. God is for us. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, our Lord. We shall overcome. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you for this blessed assurance in a time that we needed so much in the face of so many challenges as we have to face uncharted waters. Thank you that we can do it now with, with the assurance God is for us and nothing, nothing in heaven or earth, in this life or death, can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We will continue to serve the Holy Communion. And I invite you, wherever you are right now, if you have prepared for this with your own juice, wine, water, whatever, and bread or crackers or buns. Let us celebrate Holy Communion together. Come, all you are loved by God. Come to the table of the Lord. Come and eat food with no cost. Come and drink with no money to pay. We come to eat to drink with our hearts filled with gladness. Yes, dear Lord, our God, our hearts truly are glad and we are filled with thankfulness because in your great love you did not abandon us in the dark and fearful places of this world, but in Jesus you came to us to rescue us, to restore us and to give us new life. And all who are tired and burdened all who are frightened and unsafe, all who are sick and broken, can come and find new life. We remember the way that Jesus showed us his love. On the evening he died, he had supper with his friends. And during the meal, he took a loaf of bread, gave thanks for it, broke it, and then passed it around with these words, this is my body broken for you. 
eat this and remember me. And after the meal, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks for it, and then passed it around with these words, This is my blood shed for you. Drink this and remember me. And now, every time that we eat bread like this, and every time we drink wine like this, we remember Jesus and His everlasting love. Where, where we are right now, let us also greet each other, one another, with the peace of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. As an expression of our unity of faith on this particular day and under these circumstances, let us together say the words of the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, O Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again, He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will now institute the signs of the communion, and you will enjoy it right where you are. On the night Jesus was betrayed and deserted, he took the bread, broke it, and offered it in thanksgiving to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus offered the cup in thanksgiving and said, This is my blood of the new covenant which was poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us give thanks to God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within, within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, for He has done great things. And we say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Bless His holy name. Amen. Receive the blessing of God as we continue from here in our journey. And may you and everyone, wherever you are, experience this blessing. As I bless you with the priestly blessing we find in number 6, verse 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you His peace. And I put the name of the Lord upon you and I bless you. Amen.